वेलकम टू मुस्लिम नेटवर्क टीवी दिस इज इमाम मलिक मुजाहिद गाजा इसराइल सेज इट इटसेल्फ दैट दे हैव थ्रोन 6000 बॉम्ब्स इट्स एसेंशियली अ कारपेट बॉम्बिंग यूनाइटेड नेशन सेज 200000 पीपल आर ऑलरेडी डिस्प्लेस क्लोज टू 22000 होम्स हैव बीन डिस्ट्रॉयड वाटर एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फूड everything is running out at this situation an author an intellectual an educator is with us directly from gaza rafat al arir welcome to muslim network tv assalamu alaikum wa assalam wa thank you sir for having me i'm honored well thank you so much for joining al arir is the co-editor of gaza unsilenced His writings have appeared in the New York Times. He stresses the lack of coverage of devastation in Gaza by Israel, even by relief organizations. Please share with us what is the situation. You have some electricity, so you are able to join through internet, I guess. Uh, again, thank you for having me. It's uh, it's it's devastating. I'm having electricity because we have learned from more than twenty years of uh, very. tight siege on palestinians from israel to take our precaution so we have a generator and i have a battery here so i i think i on average i have 5 five, 5 five hours of electricity i can be online this uh, during this time uh, uh, uh the number you gave is is devastating israel throwing 6000 bombs and we speak about bombs that range from around 1 ton bombs and sometimes it drops one or two or three at the same place same home same residential building and that's why the numbers of people killed are skyrocketing we speak about more than 1300 palestinians in 6 days israel uh, kills about 250 palestinians every day so far 20000 palestinian homes uh, housing units were destroyed the infrastructure four universities Uh, 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 more than 17 mosques were were destroyed uh, schools were destroyed uh, and the the most serious thing to, uh, nowadays in this savage attack barbaric attack by israel is the uh, the closure of gaza from all sides and preventing the water the electricity and and the food from coming from coming in and Uh, like you you said yeah everything is indeed uh, running out if you don't have electricity you can't have water here because we need water pumps and if you don't have this you can't preserve whatever little food you have in 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 the fridge and the food is already running out because israel also targets farms and lands and farmers and, and even people who move from one one place to another this is the most difficult we have been through many israeli attacks and wars recently but this is by far the most devastating and the most dangerous you have generator but uh, if if israel has already blocked uh, egypt from providing fuel so your generator going to run out pretty soon are you trying to preserve it somehow we're trying we usually because uh, for 15 years we only had around 8 to 10 electricity every day can you imagine this 15 years we have uh 10 hours of electricity and then 10 hours of no electricity so that's why we have a generator on the first place because we turn it on when it's uh the electricity is is cut off at night which is day every other day uh, we turn it on from 4 to say to to 12 in the night and that's like 7 hours but nowadays we're turning it only 3 hours so the fuel we have could last Uh, more uh, more days like probably uh, a couple of weeks maximum a month and uh, until then we could uh, be uh, uh, managed to 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 bring water here but if the food runs from the shops and from the supermarkets we're looking at uh, israel's plan to starve palestinians in gaza so what uh, you know several employees of the united nations and red cross have been killed also and you mention 17 mosques have been destroyed uh, what are people thinking what are the choices palestinians have at this moment in gaza no one is safe 
that's the the main issue here this is the idea israel is is, is sending the message it, it, it was yesterday that israel the red crescent uh, ambulances coordinated with uh, with israel to uh, uh, retrieve some of the people trapped under the rubble of a home israel destroyed and 99 percent of the bombings takes place when people are asleep inside so people were trapped they made a call and they said we want to there are people injured inside the israeli army gave them the red light allowed them to get into the area and then bombed the ambulance of the red crescent killing uh, three or four uh, uh, medics when israel targets uh, the red crescent when israel targets the united nations employees and facilities it is sending a clear message to everybody in gaza and outside that nobody is safe we can kill anybody and nobody can uh, say a word no can no, no one can prevent us from doing this how do you see the spirits of people around you whatever neighborhood you're coming from from gaza uh, are there bombs uh, which has been uh, you can you hear bombing uh, do you meet people who are survivors of bombing how are they coping with this situation yeah it, uh, again every every area is 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 attacked by israel i'm originally i usually come from gaza it's very small it's just a small strip that's why it's called the gaza strip i come from an area near the border it's called shujaia and along with other areas like Beit Hanun and Jabalia, and Beit Lahia, they are severely bombed because they are close to the, the border. Uh, and constantly, most of the people there left their homes under the severity of the bombings. And uh, they include my family, my parents, my brothers and sisters who live there. I, 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 I live in the Gaza city since uh, after the Israel, Israeli war in 2014 when my whole family uh, home was destroyed I, I i moved here close to my uh, to my work yeah i constantly meet people i know people who were uh, whose ho- homes were destroyed i have my coll- some friends some colleagues who were killed by israeli members and some of them were killed along with 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 their wife and and all their children and sometimes their parents because in in gaza here it's, it's generational. When we speak about a Palestinian home, it's usually a home that the father built. And then the, the children, when they grow up, they start building above. So every home is basically two, two floors or three floors or four floors, meaning the more uh, children you have, the more families uh, you have. And that's why uh, usually uh, when uh, one family is, uh, is targeted by Israeli bombs, uh, Israel kills uh, tens of people sometimes today there was a report about a Shihab family. They were staying in their uh, family home and they were also hosting a family that Israel displaced from near the border. So there are more civilians and more children. And this home in the middle of the night was brought down by several Israeli missiles and uh, more than uh, 44 uh, Palestinians were killed, uh, mainly from one family, the Shihab family. Now, in the U.S., even those people who support Palestine and uh, for its freedom oppose apartheid, call it apartheid, uh, they also are concerned about Palestinian uh, from Gaza going and uh, doing indiscriminate killing inside Israel. Uh, an Islamic position in this has been a killing a civilian is not allowed by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, and here the image, uh, you know, Israel was losing in the eyes of Americans, more Americans for the first time in history of surveys have more sympathy with Palestine. But now suddenly, uh, everything has turned around. Do you think uh, uh, Palestinian have some other choices to resist uh, other than something which will, uh, which can be used against them? I think this is a good question. Uh, as Palestinians, we have tried everything. We resisted by, uh, you know, nonviolent means. We resisted by uh, boycotting, by general strikes. We resisted by stones. Only in 2018, Palestinians marched towards the borders, demanding the end of the siege. And that's the simplest demand you got. Not 
the, the complete freedom uh, and liberation of Palestine. Just remove the siege from Gaza, allow Palestinians to have their own port, their, their own airport, to, to be able to transport, to travel and to import. And Israel met those people with bullets, killed more than 200 uh, Palestinians and injured many people using snipers. Killing people, medics, journalists, little children, little kids, women, elderly people. And Palestinians tried peace talks with the Palestinian Authority. What did Israel give the Palestinian Authority? Nothing. In the West Bank, there, bare, there, there is not any serious kind of resistance, armed resistance. Yet, the, the settlements expand every. This is not about Gaza. This is not about today. We speak about more than 70 years of occupation, more than 70 years of destruction and killing, uh, more than 70 years of, uh, of, of, of settlements, of racism, of apartheid. And a very important point here is that Israel uses its civilians as soldiers because every adult is a soldier in Israel. You have to join the army. This is one. So you get you are everybody participates in the army. Number two, if you are, if you finish your army service, you have to serve at least one month every year as a soldier. So Palestinians do their best to avoid harming the civilians, but when Israel is using them, these villages near the border, these villages that that belong to to us, and personally myself. My grandmother had land, owned land there, but these villages were destroyed. The people were killed and were dismissed by, by Israel. So those are occupiers, colonizers living on our land. Palestinians and the Palestinian resistance does its best to avoid harming civilians. But if you look at the West Bank, for example, those settlers are civilians. They were, but they're carrying guns that are more dangerous. In the, in the past five days, by the way, Israel killed more than 30 Palestinians in the West Bank. And some of those killed were killed by Israeli civilians, the settlers, the Jewish settlers, who are armed and dangerous. So I think whatever the Palestinians do, nobody is going to be pleased. Or whatever the Palestinians do, nobody is uh, going to listen. So is it only when Israelis die that you listen to us, that you pay attention, that you are concerned suddenly? This has to be changed because all across the world, Palestinians used, uh, peoples used all possible means to resist. Every Palestinian is ready to stop their armed resistance as long as there is a serious result out of, you know, all other uh, means of, of, of resistance. So again, while generally we don't, nobody likes, fighting is the most difficult thing people uh, do, I think. I'm not a fighter myself, but I read and I see. The easiest thing is to stay in office and have your own life peacefully. But if Israel imposes, uh, and, and I think in two, uh, just four months ago, I think it was seven months ago, Israel started bombing people, leaders in Gaza in, in March 2023. And they said because those people were planning an attack. So the message was, and this is why I think Hamas started this, preemptively started this attack as a reaction to the Israeli occupation. Because the message Israel sent, sent that was that we will kill you anytime we choose, and then we will say you were planning an attack. So why don't I react now when I am ready rather than uh, get surprised by uh, uh, your uh, uh, Israeli occupation? Uh, we're talking with Rifat uh, al who is uh, co-editor of Gaza Unsilenced and has been writing, uh, his writings have appeared at the New York Times as well. Uh, tell me this, um, the world is saying it was a surprise attack uh, and Israeli intelligence failed and uh, other people are saying that, uh, you know, Palestinians have been preparing for it openly for a while. So what is the surprise here? So you being in the media, did you have feeling that this thing going to happen? Uh, I, I didn't like expect it to be at least at this large scale. There is always this, we are under occupation. There is a lot of priorities that we have as Palestinians, but Palestinian armed groups always train, always try to improve the, the way they react to Israeli uh, enemy and its aggression in order to make it pay a price. 
So what I what I can imagine, I'm not an, a political analyst, but what I can imagine is that the Palestinians wanted to cap to capture a couple of Israeli soldiers, five, ten, for example, engage with those people, with the soldiers who kill Palestinians, who bomb them, who shoot them down near the borders. But all of a sudden, the Israeli army collapsed because they are really they are cowards. In in many ways, they are heavily armed, heavily equipped heavily trained technology and everything, but with the power of faith, the faith in our right as Palestinians, as owners of this land. Palestinians with their courage, these are young, very young people, the fighters. They managed to arrest and capture soldiers from their back, from inside their tanks and bring them to, to, to Gaza because there is a very important message here. There are more than 50, 5,000 Palestinians in Israeli prisons, children, women who are suffering, people sick with cancer. Israel is not even giving them, sometimes it only gives, it gives them painkillers for cancer and serious diseases. It's treating Palestinians horribly. So if no other option, means of resistance succeeds, I think this is the choice that the, the Palestinian resistance uh, uh, chose. This is the last resort. We'll be right back after these messages.